thank you so much for joining us on today. We're going to ask that you stand on your feet. Our song for this morning is going to be, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I am on the battlefield for my Lord.
sing songs of praise, Lord, because you are a good God. Thank you, Master, for loving us.
kids, like I said, you know, you know, if you could have had glasses, you know, it would be about all about ninety percent of them. Because you had the glasses, you would be able to see the sun and the sparking or I mean the moon sparking over the sun. Well, in the past of totality, as they called it, that means that you're in the actual totality. So when the uh, moon crosses across the sun, when it comes to Something like that in the picture. There's this big black circle, <laughs> this big black circle with this ring of light around. And it's just so amazing because you're seeing the, the, the temperature change, everything is dim, everybody starts screaming and hollering, ah, totality. <laughs> I did the same thing because I was recording, totality, totality. But it was just
I've been to myself. He has been tremendously good, and he's still good right now. And we thank God for who he is and what he has already done. He is the awesome and the amazing God. Thank you, choir. Thank you, musicians. Thank you for reminding us that God is good. Thank you, Sister Whitlock, for reminding us of how good God really is. Uh, you were a witness this morning, weren't you? Thank you, Brother Whitlock. Thank you so much for, for this couple for reminding us of how good God is. And right before our very eyes this morning, we saw how good. <laughs> ah, hallelujah. We must be willing to do today what others won't do in order to have tomorrow what others won't have. That's a good place to write that down. Les Brown says... You must be willing to do today what others won't do in order to have tomorrow what others won't have. The great Les Brown declares that you must be willing to do some things today that others won't do in order to have tomorrow what others don't have. We serve the awesome and the amazing God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. We've been hearing great testimonies of how, who God is, even from, from the right center this week. Yeah, those who say, even atheists, we've heard that nobody but God can move as he has moved this week. And if you don't believe who God is, just take a listen, take a look. God is revealing himself all around the world. Who wouldn't serve a God like the one I serve? He is the almighty, awesome, amazing God. He is God all by himself. Thank God for who he is and what he has already done. We serve the amazing God. Let's look again at Psalm 19, one that was mentioned during our eclipse moment, one that was read during our devotional period. Let's look and see from the word of God what God has to say. Psalm number 19, verses 1 through 6. If the Lord spares, we will cover the rest of that number of psalms later on. But let's look at verses 1 through 6. See what the Lord has to say. Amen. Did you come to hear what the Lord has to say today? Amen. Or did you come to see who's with who and who's dressed how? We came to see what the Lord has to say. Let's see what the Lord has to say. Psalm number 19, verses 1 through 6. And uh, when we read Psalm, we, uh, and when we refer to Psalms, we're referring to a number because the book of Psalms is uh, really a song, a continual song or a group of songs that mean song. So we don't refer to Psalms as chapters. We refer to them as numbers. Just like you have numbers in the midst of songs and stanzas, stuff like that. Psalm number 19, beginning at verse number 1 through and ending at verse 6, you'll find these words. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. Day unto day utters speech, and night unto night reveals knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line has gone out through all the earth in their words to the ends of the world. In them he has set a tabernacle for the sun which is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoices like a strong man to run its race. It rises, its rising is from one end of the heaven and its circuit is to the other end. And there is nothing hidden I want to talk about the God of glory. All right. 
the God of of glory. The God of of glory. <laughs> April 8th, we broke witness, even if you were in Dallas or in the line of totality, you you saw on every news report the hand of God. When there is an eclipse, as we have been educated on this morning, the moon, this, this being a solar eclipse, the moon moves very slowly in the pathway of the sun. And as the moon moves in the pathway of the sun, sometimes we see partial eclipse. Other times we see a total eclipse. Some 20 years later, we may see this phenomenon happen again. You see, eclipse in the United States are like snow in Houston. You'll get that sooner or later. Snow shows up every 20 to 25 years in the city of Houston. And we get the same reaction from the snow as we get with the eclipse. Grown folk with frail bones run outside to play in the snow. Knowing very well if you fall, you're going to be laid up for six months. But because God does great things and he amazes us, so much, every now and then, we want to see what God is doing. It doesn't matter if you're Catholic. It doesn't matter if you're Presbyterian. It doesn't matter if you're Baptist or Methodist. You need to understand that the God we serve is such an awesome God. He does what he wants to do with whom he chooses to do it, with anything he chooses to do it, Whenever he wants to do it, any way he wants to do it, any time he chooses to do it, not because of you, but he does it because of God. Now, it's simply amazing that the Whitlock can ask the Lord to move the clouds. And God does it. It's because God is such an awesome God until he knows what we're going to pray and he knows what he's going to do even before, after, in doing our prayer. So we are not praying to God to tell God what to do. We are praying to God to fall in fellowship with him because we know if anybody can do it, God can. So you ought to try prayer often. You ought to call on God for the little bitty things as well as the big old huge things. Somebody this morning forgot to thank God for the food that was on their table when the man on the street is going through the rubbish and going through the trash getting half-eaten hamburger so he can make it through the day. It's all because God has chosen us to do great things with us and do great things through us not because we've been so special. It's just because of God's sovereign will and how he uses whoever he wants to use anytime he chooses. I don't deserve to stand here. My life was a wreck, and every now and then I'm reminded by my own life that my life can still be a wreck. But it's only because of who God is and what God has already done that I'm able to stand here today and tell you about the goodness of God. And let me just serve notice on the good folk in the house. You don't have to go through trouble to know who God is. You don't have to have a near-death experience to appreciate God. God is all around us, and God is doing great things. Somewhere around year 2005, we made our, our trip to Jeremiah. Jeremiah is in Brazil, and Jeremiah is a village. They don't have running water like we have. They don't have dogs and cats as their pets. Matter of fact, they have a hog in a village of 300 people 
and that hall is their path. And soon or later, their pet will disappear in the middle of the night. The pet didn't walk away. The hog didn't leave the village. After a while, the hog is laying before the people on a stick over the open fire, just turning, and they would take turns. The same children that played with the hog, they would take turns turning the hog. We couldn't give them Bibles in this village. Because they would use the Bible as newspaper. We couldn't talk to them about Jesus in the village. Because they didn't understand who Jesus was. So we had to put together a team of individuals that would go every year for 10 years before we could even get the message to them that Jesus is the Son of God. But one thing we had going for ourselves. And that is nature itself. Nature spoke to these people in the village. Do the math. It was 300 folk in the village. And there were only nine of them that were men. Do the math. Do the math. There were only, there were only nine men in the village. And there were 300 people in the village. And out of 300 people, there were nine men. And they had a little small church in the village that everybody didn't go to. But they had a cafe. And the jokers that didn't go to the village church, they went to the village cafe. And I'm trying to figure it out. We are seven hours away from Brasilia or Brazil. You think Macau has holes in the road. You think that, that if you go further down Shuramai, you will find holes in the road. Yeah, yeah. They had holes that the whole box would disappear in. Oh because they had no running water, they had no municipality, and they, for 10 years, one group of missionaries after the other would go to Jeremiah to talk to them about being saved, but we couldn't talk to them about Jesus because they don't understand that kind of carrying on. We could only talk to them about nature, and that's what they saw. Such it is in Psalm number 19. The Bible, the, the Bible personalized, the Bible makes the heavens talk. The Bible, the Bible shows us in Psalm number 19, the Bible says, the heavens declares God glory. This word glory, this word glory means abundance of God. This word glory means God's dignity, God's reverence. This word, word glory means God's honor. The Bible says in Psalm 19 that the heavens declare his glory. The heavens are talking. When men won't talk, the heavens are testifying. When we won't praise him, the heavens will praise him. My first point today is that, that we must get to a point that we like the, 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 the heavens. We must acknowledge God. We, we as human beings, we can walk where we want to walk, we can go where we want to go, we can plead our own case, we have an education, we know what we're doing, we got sense enough to do what we want to do, when we want to do it, the way we want to do it, we got good sense, but the heavens tell us, even with good sense, we need to acknowledge God. Your degree is not above God. Your social status is not above God. Your money is not above God. Your job is not above God. Your, your life is not above God. It's God who made us and not we ourselves. The psalmist says we are the sheep of his pasture. We are the people that he's created. We need to acknowledge God. Let me tell you, every person under my voice and those who will see this later must get to a point where they acknowledge who God is and how God does things. The fact is the heavens acknowledge God. Not only do they acknowledge, they declare that God is glorious, that God is magnificent, that God is special. There is no God like our God. He stepped out on nothing in the midst of nowhere, spoke a word in the midst of darkness, and light came skipping down through the universe because he is God. There's nobody like him. 
He wasn't elected God. He wasn't selected as God. He wasn't voted in as God. He wasn't, de he wasn't determined to be God. He just always is God, and he always will be God. My first point to you today is you need to acknowledge God. Acknowledge him. The Bible says very clearly that the heavens acknowledge him, and they declare the glory of God. In the firmament shows his handiwork. When you even see it, when you even see it on TV, the eclipse is amazing because you normally see this big, big red ball of light. It comes up in the east, makes its way to the west every single moment and every single day. He does it over and over again. This is how we see it. But the fact of the matter is there is some rotating and some revolving going on. And God is such an awesome God, it is nighttime somewhere. It is nighttime somewhere. And God is such an awesome God. When we went to uh, Alaska at 1130 at night, we walk in the street and it's as light as 530 in the evening. Then if you go some seasons, it is dark all day, all night long for 24 hours. Nobody can do that but God. You need to acknowledge who God is. The heavens, the heavens, it says the heavens in the firmament, meaning the stars, the skies, the galaxies. Brother Whitlock said you begin to see stuff in the dark that you hadn't seen in the light. Because it's amazing. You got to catch this. You got to catch the fact that God shows his hand and works whenever he wants to. The sky begins to get black. The stars begin to shine what we see as brighter. The galaxies begin. We can even count the Milky Way. We, God is able to take the moon and reposition it. And even though he allowed man to predict something, most of the time men predict it is because God has given them full knowledge of it. That many times God gives us just an eclipse of knowledge. Just a little bit. And that's when God calls us to walk by faith and not by sight. When God gives you an eclipse of his glory, you got to walk by faith. What do you mean? What I mean is that when you can't see it, God is still working behind the scenes. When you don't know what's happening, you got to trust God to bring you through and to bring you out. Somebody said the other day, I'm going through some trouble. The good thing about it is you're going through. You're not parking there. You're moving through it. And as you move through it, God is blessing even then. The moon moved on over. And in a few seconds, a few minutes, it's light again. Temperature rises 10, 15, 20 more degrees, just like it was before. Let me tell you, God is such an awesome God. We need to, we need to acknowledge that he is God. The heavens acknowledge. My second point to you is we have to appreciate God. We need to appreciate who God is. We have to appreciate God and how God does things. If I was God, I wouldn't do it the way God does it. Because all of my enemies, all of my troublemakers would be no more. But because he's God and I'm not God, he gives us grace and he gives us mercy. And because we don't deserve it, God keeps right on giving it to us. Not because of who we are, not because of how spiritual we are. It's because he is God. All of your secrets are right before God. You ought to appreciate God. Let me tell you why I appreciate him. If you won't testify, testify why you appreciate him. I appreciate him because he didn't reveal my stuff. Anybody else in the room who can appreciate God because he didn't turn your stuff over to wicked men? Let me tell you, when, when God turns your stuff over to wicked men, then those men will have their way with you. Thank God that he didn't reveal my dirt. 
Late Pastor E.B. Hill tells the story of how he messed up. He said he knew he had messed up, and there was one woman in the church that knew he had messed up. And that day, after he got through preaching, you know, during that time, you had a high chair, two low chairs, and then a low chair sitting in a lower chair, sitting in the pulpit, and he was sitting in his high chair, and the podium was a big old wide wooden podium, and he said he opened the doors of the church. He had just messed up that week. He opened the doors of the church and they gave the invitation, and that woman walked down the aisle. <laughs> During that time, they would give you the mic. We don't give you the mic anymore because we, we learned lessons. During that time, they would give you the mic. Brother Johnson, they gave, he gave that woman the mic. And, and usually the pastor would stand there while the person is talking with the mic. But he says he sat behind the pulpit. He sat in his chair and said, Lord, blot it out. Lord, blot it out. Lord, blot it out. Lord, you promised you would blot it out. And in an instant, God blotted it. This woman didn't come down the aisle to tear him apart. She didn't come down the aisle to reveal his stuff. She came the aisle, down the aisle to tell the people, you have such a great pastor on your hand. And he is a man that, that loved the people. And, and he's a man that, that walked with God. And he's sitting in the, in the, in the back of the pulpit saying the same thing because he didn't know when the table's going to turn. He said at any minute she could have changed her mind. But he said, Lord, blot it out. Lord, blot it out. Lord, blot it out. Have you ever gotten to a point in your life where you had to say, God, blot it out? Lord, Lord, don't let my enemies find this out because if they find this out, they're going to crucify me. We ought to appreciate God. The Bible says the heavens day and night are speech. The, the, the heavens talk about God. The, the heavens reveal God. The heavens deliver to mankind what God is doing behind the scenes. How many of you know that the meteorologists don't always know what's going on? I mean, a lot of folk have missed out on church because of Thursday's meteorology report. Oh, it's going to be storming. And I used to get phone calls, but I guess I'm so crazy with my answers, they don't call me anymore. Brother Miles, I used to get phone calls. You know, it's going to be bad out there. The, the, the meteorologist says it's going to be bad out there. We still have Bible study. We still going to have church. I said, look, brother, we don't look for a reason not to have church. We look for a reason to have church. And if God is able to take us to work on Monday, he's able to bless us on Sunday. That's why we come to the house. We come to the house of God. Jesus says the house of prayer because we acknowledge him together and we appreciate him together. As iron sharp as iron, so does one brother do to the other because when I get with you, I realize my stuff ain't as bad as I thought it was. Isaiah says it like this. Isaiah says in Isaiah chapter 6, Isaiah says it was in the year that King Uzziah died that I also saw the Lord. And I saw the Lord high and lifted up. And his train filled the temple. And the doorpost shook. And there was a violent shaking. And there were some seraphims, meaning some angels, hanging around. And they touched my lip with a live cloth. He said, when I saw the Lord, I saw myself. When I looked up to God, I had to look inward to myself. And when I saw how holy he was, I saw how unholy I am. And he continued to look around. And as he continued to look around, he looked at his friends, his buddies, his dogs, his cronies. He looked at other preachers. He looked at other pastors. And he said, not only am I messed up, when I compare my friends to God, I realize that they're messed up. He says, oh, woe is me, God, I come before you. Change me, God, what would you have me to do? Don't wait till you see a situation going downhill before you acknowledge God. And you appreciate him. The heavens, the firmaments of, of the earth tells us that they acknowledge God. They appreciate God. Third point for you today, you must admire God. You got to get to a point where, where LeBron James, you, he doesn't deserve your admiration. You have to get to a point where, where Steph Curry doesn't turn you on with his wiggling and dabbling. 
I mean, Steph Curry in my day would be traveling every time. They, they walk in 10 places. After they pick up the ball, they would be traveling. And when they do that old crossover like this, what would that be, Brother Miles? They would be carrying the ball. But now we have been amazed. We admire what these men are doing. We admire what, what C.J. Stroud is doing, and we ought to. But when it comes to God, no man compares to him. So you need to acknowledge God. You need to appreciate God, but you need to admire God. You need to admire God. The heavens admire him. It says, day unto day utter speech, and night unto night reveals knowledge. There is no speech nor language where the voice is not heard. Let me tell you, you got you to get to a point where you admire God so much until you're willing to speak up. The late John Lewis would say, if you see something, say something. If you hear something, say something. Let me tell you, every now and then, you want a God that you can hear and a God that you can feel. Back home, they would say it in an old Dr. Watt. How many of y'all know what an old Dr. Watt is? In, a, in an old Dr. Watt, they would say, I wouldn't have a God that I couldn't feel sometime. And then they would get happy and they could say, they say, I feel him moving on the altar of my heart. We have to acknowledge God. We have to appreciate God. We have to admire God. God does things that nobody else can do. How many astronauts could have taken the moon? Could have repositioned the moon? Or could have put the sun in total alignment. How many smart people can make it happen? I want to tell you today that God is in love with science. How do I know he's in love with science? Because he's omniscience. He is omniscience. He is omniscient, meaning he's omniscience. And because he's omniscience, God amazes us with science every night. He blows, have God ever blows your mind? Have God ever blows your mind? There was a video that I was watching, and all of these women were in line. And there was a, a lady in a white dress. She was number two in line. And uh, she came in line. Now, they're headed to a job interview, and everybody's in line facing this way. And the lady in the white dress was number two in line. Brother Taylor, she snatched the woman that was number one in line and pulled her out of line and said, go to the back. And she said, go to the back. And then as she tried to get next in line, everybody else in line said, not on my watch. You ain't doing that here. And everybody pushed her back out of line. And all of a sudden, when it was time to go in for the job interview, the man didn't come through the front door. He came through the back door. And then the woman who was at front in first, she's now first in line because he came through the door where the last person was. Let me tell you, you need to admire God because God is doing some things on your behalf that you don't even know of. And when she got ready to go, when she got ready to go, she, get, she went in with an attitude. She looked down the aisle there. She looked her down the aisle and she strutted herself right on in the job interview. And the last of the idea is that she got the job. And the interview never had to make it to the first person that was in line. The second person, third person, the fifth person. The interviewer never had to make it to them. God says, the first shall be last. And the last shall be first. And he's giving us a real demonstration every single day. Therefore, I'm just admiring God. We got to admire God. We got to admire what God is doing. We, I mean, it's just amazing. When you real children up in the 21st century, if you get them out of high school, you, you are amazing parents. If you get them to do good in school, you are, you are a rock star. If you get them to say their grace before they eat, boy, you're doing a good job. If you get them to be respectful for senior citizens and respectful for elders, you are doing something that no one else can do in the 21st century. If you can teach them how to say yes, ma'am, 
No, ma'am. Yes, sir. No, sir. If you can just get them to say thank you. If you can just get your child to say thank you, let me tell you, you my hero. Without reminding them to say thank you. I admire you. But the greatest parents in the whole world does not come close to the almighty God. So you got to acknowledge God, appreciate God, admire God, and you have to adore God. Look at the, the, the elements of heaven is talking, are talking to us. And he, he's saying that they don't even go toward the earth without hearing. We can hear what they're saying. Jesus says to Nicodemus, he said, Nicodemus, you hear the wind you feel the wind. Where does it come from? No man knows where it comes from, and no man knows where it stops, but God does. God knows how to turn it on, and God knows how to turn it off. And on a bicycle, I mean, we just don't look at the heat. We look at the wind. I can handle the, I can handle the heat, I can handle the cold, but when it comes to the wind, that wind jumps on you like a bat. That wind will blow you sideways when you're trying to go straight. That wind will blow you back when you're trying to go forward. I thank God that I can pray every now and then. I said, now, Lord, hold back the wind. Hold back the rain. I, I was telling Pastor Rose, I was five miles from home on my 16.5-mile journey. I was five miles from home. I said, you know, I was right there by Williams Trace. I was coming down Lexington. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, it starts storming. It starts raining. I got on this helmet with holes in it. I got on a jogging suit with holes in it. A cycle, everything I got on is breathable. It started pouring down rain. Pastor Rose had a nerd ask me, well, brother, what did you do? I said, I put my head down and I kept on pedaling. Because I wasn't going to get anywhere just sitting under the bridge. And he said, well, who was with you? I was by myself. And I'm glad I was by myself because the other folks would have stopped. I just put my head down. Cars passing me by. And, and cars are blowing. I just got my head down. And Brother Hopper, I'm just telling For five miles, I don't think I stopped to take a breath. I, I'm trying to make it in. Let me tell you, God does what he wants to do when he, what he wants to. And yeah, I prayed. And I asked the Lord, 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 stop the rain. Lord, stop, stop it from happening. And God just sit up there and told me, I am on the science. I knew the science before you got there. He said to me, he says, I am omniscient. I am the one who knows everything. And evidently, God thought that's what I needed at the moment. I took a shower before I left home. But God decided that I needed a shower as I arrived. And he watched me real good because he is God. I, I have to admire him. And my fourth point, you've got to adore God. You have to adore him. You have to adore God. The Bible says their, their line has gone out through all the earth in their words to the end of the world. In them he has set a tabernacle for the sun, God has set the sun in a silvery socket, which is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber and rejoicing like a strong man to run his race. It, it says we got to adore God. We just have to adore. We just have to thank God for who he is. Praise him. Adore him. Just Spend some time alone with God, not asking for anything, but just telling God how great he is. Amen, amen. God, I adore you. God, I thank you. Don't wait till you get to church. Try it at the house. Lord, in the midst of trouble, Lord, I adore you. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I worship you. Lord, I thank you. God, you kept me in my right mind. God, you kept me out of trouble. God, you brought me out of trouble. God, you made a way out of no way. God, you are my leaning pole. God, you are my walking cane. God, you are my bridge over troubled water. God, you are food on my table. You are money in my pocket. You are in my bank account. Lord, I adore you. I thank you. I praise you, Lord, for who you are.
we got to thank God for who he is. Well, see, we're busy thanking God for what God has done. We admire him for what he's done, but we adore him because of who he is. And when we adore him for who he is, we're able to thank him in the midst of the trouble. You see, you may not have happiness, but you ought to have joy. Because when you got this joy I have, the world didn't give it to you. And the world doesn't take it away. You see, happiness is dependent on what happens. When, you, when, when things happen, you lose your happiness. When things go well, you gain your happiness. But when you talk about joy, you can talk about it when the children are climbing up food's hill. You can talk about joy, and you can have joy when your bills are not paid. You can talk about joy and have joy when you got more money than you got money. You can talk about joy and have joy when things are not going well. You can talk about joy and have joy because your friends have walked out on you. You can talk about joy and have joy when things Lord, I just adore you. In, in the midst of trouble, in, in the midst of things going on around you, you ought to have joy. Because this joy I have, the world didn't give it to me. And the world can't take it away. This joy I have doesn't depend on whether I'm happy or sad. This joy I have doesn't depend on whether I get what I ask God for or not. This joy I have goes straight down in the deep sea of my mouth and it comes out and talk about how good God is. That's why I can just adore him. Lord, I, it is amazing to me. It's adore, that's my final point now. We, we ought to be amazed with God. We ought to be amazed with God. We ought to be amazed with God. It says, the final, final verses, it talks about the fact of the bridegroom. We, we're like the bridegroom coming out of his chamber. He looks at the bride. He begins to rejoice. And he carries himself and rejoicing like a strong man getting ready to run the race. And, and, and when Usain Bolt, Usain Bolt was running, he didn't have a problem. He, he didn't have an issue at all. Even when he had to come back from an in, uh, injury. See, people don't want to spend time alone with God and adore him, but they want God to fight their battles. We want God to do what we do. Usain Bolt said it like this. He says, I spent four years in order to run nine seconds. He spent four years of training, four years of running up and down hills, four years of stretching, Four years of weightlifting, four years of missing out on parties, four years of getting along with the Lord, four years of doing what he does so he can run a nine-second race. Nine seconds. Spend four years preparing for it. How much more should we spend time in amazement of God, watching what God is doing, and thinking, hey, we got to stop hanging out with lazy people. We got to stop hanging out with people who are sad every day. We got to stop hanging out with people who are who are so down on themselves. They can't see the good in themselves. How you think they're going to see good in you? We got to stop hanging out with negativity. You got to stop hanging out with mediocrity. You got to stop saying that I can't make it and I'm not good enough and because God has made you good enough. We serve the amazing God. And because he's so amazing, you are good enough. Just who you are, just the right color, just the right shape, just the right breath, just the right mindset, just the right forehead, just the right number of hands, if you got any or not. God is amazing to me. Hallelujah. He's amazing. He, he's, a, such a, he's such an amazing God. Stop letting people tell you you are not. Stop letting people tell you don't try because it may not work. Let them know, well, it's going to work. I'm going to trust God to work. And if it doesn't work this time, I'm going to try it next time. And if it doesn't work this time, I'm going to try it again this time. And because we serve the amazing God, we ought to be amazed with this God. The, the final verse, verse number six, talks about the fact that it's shining. It's rising. It's bright. It's rising. It's rising. It's from one end of heaven. And it's circuit to the other end. Look at what God does. And there is nothing 
hidden from his heat. Let me tell you, just the other day, just the other day, the moon was hot. I don't know the temperature of the moon, but the moment the moon began this solar eclipse and it began to line up, it got hot. The text declares that there's no escaping. There's no running from the heat of the sun because God has made it hot. And it doesn't matter how humid it is in Houston. It doesn't matter how hot it gets in Houston. It's no comparison to the heat of hell. I want to stop by to tell you today that hell was made for somebody and it's hot and you can't stop the heat because God has placed it there. But the good news today is the amazing God, the one that we are amazed by, he made a way out of no way where we don't have to deal with heat. We can deal with a perfect temperature because God has made a way and he did it over 2,000 years ago. Yes, he did through his son called Jesus. Jesus took a cross, I tell you. He killed, he, they killed him. He was killed on a skull hill called Calvary. Jesus the Christ died, I tell you. He died on Calvary. They killed him on Calvary. Mean men killed the innocent man on Calvary just so we can escape the heat. I'm telling you, we need to escape the heat. I'm telling you, Houston, is nothing compared to the heat of hell. You can escape the heat today. Jesus died on Calvary so you can escape the heat. They hung him high. They stretched him wide. They dropped him low. They nailed him tight. He died on Calvary. And after he was dead, they pierced him in his side. Out came blood and water. His blood can cleanse us. His blood can wash us. They laid my Lord and your God in a barber tomb. It was a barber tomb because it didn't need it too long. It was a barber tomb because early that third day morning, he got up with all power and heaven and earth in his hand. He got up with all power. He got up early that third day morning before Pilate could change the God, before the women could to get to his body, before the men got joined in a foot race to see him. He got up early that third day morning with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. That same Jesus is available today. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. Jesus is here. He begs you to come. The thoughts of the news reporter concerning the eclipse, they reported in tears. They reported crying. One reporter said that my faith is strong. He says, only God can do this. Another reporter says, out of all the reports we report from day to day and all the negativity we report, the lunar, the, the solar eclipse has brought everybody together today. President Obama couldn't bring us together. MAGA in there couldn't bring us together. President Biden couldn't bring us together. Governor Abbott can't bring us together. The mayor couldn't bring us together. Only God can bring us together. Gio Benitez says it like this. He says, out of all the stuff we report, all the negativity, all the fights, all the killing, he says not one person is violent today. Not one argument is taking place today. He says this solar eclipse has brought us all together. But I got to tell Gino, God uses what he chooses to use. And for April 8th, he, he moved and used the eclipse. But it wasn't the eclipse that brought us together. It's God who brings us together. Every now and then, we fill this room for a funeral. Every now and then, there are people on, this, on the wall. There, there, are, there are times when we have to tell the men to get up and give the women the seat. Because there's a funeral going on. And the preacher has the audacity to say, that Joe Blow and Jane Doe has brought us together. God has used that moment 
to bring us all under one roof so they can hear one man talk about a man on a tree. All of the good things that people say, all of the, the credits they give, all of the eulogies and what niceties they say, all leads up to one thing. One man standing in the pulpit talking about one man who died on a stick, who died on a tree, who died on the cross, that he was killed, laid in a tomb, but the angels moved the stone away. The tomb is empty because out of that third day morning, he rose from the dead. It is his opportunity to tell the people the same Jesus that got up early that third day morning can get up into your life today. The same Jesus that defied gravity, the same Jesus that defied death, the same Jesus that kicked the grave in the teeth, the same Jesus is available to you today. You can be saved. You can be sanctified. And you will be filled with this precious Holy Ghost if you just accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. The door is open. The invitation is extended. Will you come to Jesus? Jesus just as you are. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Just now. Just now. Just now. Just now. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Just now. You've tried other things. You've tried other people. Try Jesus. Trust him. Trust Jesus. Trust Jesus. Just now. Trust Jesus. Only trust him. Only trust him. Just now. He will save you. He will save you. He will save you. He's the one we ought to appreciate. He's the one that we ought to admire. He's the one we ought to adore. And certainly he is the one we ought to be amazed by because he is, he is God. Hallelujah to the Lord. He is, he is, he is God. We serve. Lord, through tithes or offering, in fact, it's a gift. It is time to give to the Lord. Will you raise your hand if you want an envelope? Jonathan, Jonathan, I want you to stop breakdancing in this church on Sunday. All right? Boy, he breakdanced around here, around there, out the door. Brother Hopper, if you go into the restroom, he can go to the restroom, but he can't be breakdancing. Amen. You, you, you tempting Sister Paul to get up and break dance. Don't, don't tempt the senior citizen to get up and break dance. Amen. Great things. Made a way. Made a way. Made a way. 
Lord, we pray, Father God, that you bless those that will, will turn to you. We pray, Father God, for your healing power, for your strength, for your hope to be revealed. And Lord, we ask you, Father God, to do miraculous work as only you can. But Lord, we ask you to continue to amaze us, that we can appreciate you, that we will acknowledge you, that we will continue to admire who you are. For you are God, and we trust you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank you. Hey, you're going to let me down, Brother Bob. I see that. Uh, prom is this week. Prom is this week. And Brother Carter, Brother Miles, and I, we're going to prom with Hazel this week. <laughs> Look how they clapping, Hazel. Look how they clapping. We all... We're going to pull our tucks out from 1965, and we're going to show up with bell bottoms on. We're going to prom this week. Brother Donald, we're going to prom. We had not been to prom in years now, but we, we all three going to prom this week, and we're going to be sitting in north, south, east, and then we're going to allow her to walk to the west and come back to the north, south, east. We're going to have three set of eyes on her. We are all going to the prom. Don't worry about a rental car. We take care of it for you. We're going to prom Friday. So if they ask y'all what, what happened to Pastor David, he flew back from Belize just in time to make the prom. I don't know why she wouldn't tell him, Sister Carter. We are all going to prom this week. Hallelujah. We're going to prom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lord. We serve the awesome God. Amen. 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 Sister Hopper, can you see us now? Bell bottom and, pla and plaid suits on. <laughs> big old tie. I mean, the big tie that they had back then. We're going to prom. Amen. God. Hallelujah. Sister Carter, we, she's in good hands this weekend. Amen. I want to share that Raymond and I celebrated 49 years of marriage on Friday. 49 years. Somebody else want to be married 49 years now. I want to get you a gift card to this. These are the celebrations we ought to, we ought to make. Amen. We ought to, it sets forth a good example for, for Braylon and, and Hazel and all other young people. It's a, it's a good example for us. 49 years. How many of you under 49 years old in here? How many of you less than 49 years old? Look at that. They've been married longer than you've been born. You've been living. They've been married longer than you've been living. Hallelujah. I'm looking forward to five, 49 years. Amen. I'm going to dance for y'all on my 49 years. 
I'm going to cut a rug. Sister David's going to... Sister David's going to pull out them old gospel songs and come up with some kind of line dance. That's all she knows, so she's going to come up with some kind of line dance. When I get 49, y'all remind me. It's been 49 years you promised me you're going to do, do the jig, the cha-cha, somebody. That's a great celebration. Amen. I'm asking for your prayers as we journey to, to farm soil, and I need your prayers this time like never before. Uh, please pray, lift us up spiritually and physically, medically. Please pray for us as we move to, to waters that are, are turbulent. So you pray, you pray for us. And uh, we've even had to change our itinerary as of this week because of turbulent waters. But I believe the same God that's in Houston, Texas is in Belize. Amen. He's the same God. So keep, please lift us, our team up in prayer. We'll be leaving in the morning at 7 a.m. to go to the airport so we won't be late. And uh, please lift us, lift us up. Amen. Please lift us, lift us in prayer. Amen. Bless the name of Jesus. Anybody else got any great announcements? Anybody else got something that we... I do have an announcement. We want to say happy birthday to Ed Brandon, whose birthday is tomorrow. Amen. Pastor Matthew Davis's birthday is tomorrow. <laughs> Sergio Melo's birthday is tomorrow. Sandra Moore on the 17th. Brandon Davis on the 21st. And Arthea Liggins on the 23rd. Happy birthday to y'all. Happy birthday to y'all. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Melo is probably 15 years younger than I on the same day. And so we got a whole five, six decades covered. Amen. And so God is, is good. See, I'm, I'm smooth like Brother Melo. See, I'm calm and cool. I mean, I'm, he, he's calm and cool. That's why we calm and cool. See, we're born on April the 15th. In a few, in, in a few times, they've had to change tax day, right? They changed tax day. Because they didn't want to hinder the birthday celebration that they've been hindering all these years. So, so God has been good to us, and we celebrate. And watch me. I'm going to follow Brother Melo's pattern. I'm going to be smooth and cool like he is. I'm going to be cool and smooth, just like Brother Melo. He's born on the same day. Amen. We praise God for who he is. Amen. Are there any other all minds clear? All, everybody's focused on, on celebrating tomorrow. Y'all celebrate tomorrow. On the great day. Let us stand to, to be with them. Let the church say hey. Let the church say hey. Let the church say hey. church, yes? And because they are the next church, they need to see good, positive, spiritual men. Amen. Mission and vision. We are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus said, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John 12 and 32. Father God, we thank you now for blessing us and keeping us. We thank you, Father, that we can acknowledge you, that we can be blessed in your presence. We thank you, Father God, that we, are, we admire you. Lord, we thank you, Father God, that you're doing great things around us. We ask you to bless us in our going, that we will continue to be amazed with the God who you are. Bless us, Father God, to always recognize you as the awesome and the amazing God. 
Bless us as we go, and we ask you, Father God, to keep us. Now unto him, Holy David, to keep us from falling. Unto him, the only wise and only true God. Unto him be power, glory, and dominion. Until we meet again, let us join in by saying, Brother Andrew Johnson, Brother Andrew Johnson, and the ushers.